Welcome back, sailors. We got another episode of the Bruise News here with the captain. I'm back. It's back time. We're back, baby. We're back. <laughs> What's going on with my, with my head, huh? Uh, I owe an apology to a lot of people. I know that I've apologized before in previous videos, like saying this and that or whatever, life. Th this had nothing to do with life at all, the reason I took a little bit of a break. The reason I took a break was because I wanted to try to improve the quality of the videos and be able to um, be able to make them more efficiently and show more with less, you know, because less is always more in terms of certain things. I wanted to learn how to edit videos properly and I wanted to learn how to do this and that and I'm realizing that along with being able to do all those things, I need to also be making these videos because you learn when you make these videos and I really like do th doing them so I hope nobody thinks that it had anything to do with not wanting to do them or not enjoying it because I love doing this and truthfully enough there's enough content for me to make an infinite amount of videos there's always going to be news involving wrestling or mixed martial arts or boxing and there's always going to be information with video games or anything else I really want to talk about on the other video that I do which will also be uploaded today it was only the fact that I wanted to be able to do more and wanted to be able to improve the experience. But again, like I said, the experience is going to be improved when there's stuff to watch. As long as there's stuff to watch at the moment, all those other things will fall into place and that's all that matters. So from now on, there's not going to be any breaks. We're going to try to do the two videos every two days like back to normal. I'm not going to make any promises about certain things, but we're just going to go along with it the best that we can and learn the best that we can constantly. But I want to thank everybody for the support regardless of where we're at and hopefully at some point we can start buffing this up to where it needs to be. We want to get these videos up, we want to get these videos jacked out and get everybody checking them out and we want to have fun, we want to make people laugh, we want to get people informed and that's what it's all about. Along with the fact that I'm going to be doing the videos, I also will be doing live streams off my PlayStation when I'm gaming uh, at nighttime, possibly during the day, depending on what's going on that day. Um, so if you want to come and listen to me get vulgar and angry playing games or uh, playing with the boys, you know, some of the guys I play on PSN, you can always check that out. It doesn't necessarily have to be a live stream. You don't have to necessarily be there for the live stream you can also watch the video afterwards. I'll be sure to name them um, and have them specifically set up. Uh, if you do hop into live streams, you can ask me anything and I'll be able to answer anything for you. I love talking about anything and everything. So just come, check it out, watch it, experience it, and that's the best way to get things across, 100%. <clears throat> Anyways, let's jump into some news. Uh, we had some crazy stuff happening last week, and then there was some crazy stuff that happened a few weeks ago, like with the Askren Masvidal fight, so we're going to end up talking about that stuff. And then this week we have um, the Robbie Lawler versus Robbie Lawler versus Colby Covington. God, I hate that guy so much. I hate him. I even hate his nickname. Like, his nickname is Chaos, and I don't understand why, because there's nothing chaotic about him at all he's a fucking flake anyways um going along with the first part of this we're going to talk about cyborg now cyborg said that she isn't planning on re-signing with the ufc until dana gives her a formal apology for saying that she was ducking amanda nunez so there's a lot of things that go into this because for one, Cyborg isn't a person who's ever ducked anybody in the first place. The girl's a savage, and although she did get knocked out, in my opinion, the fight was only 47 seconds long, and she was actually controlling the fight up until the point where she got jacked, but that's any fight, right? So, I mean, I don't think it really matters. I don't think a 47-second knockout means too much, but... I do think that in that fight, she made a fatal error, and since she's a bigger fighter, and this is the error... It, She's, since she's a bigger fighter, she's going to have longer arms, longer reach. So basically that means that anybody shorter than her or has shorter reach is going to be able to hit harder in the pocket. Amanda um, was backed up against the cage and taking bombs from Cyborg. And Cyborg got right on the inside, right in the pocket, and was throwing those overhand hooks. And Amanda got to her quicker with that punch. You know, we've seen it before. We saw it with Connor Aldo. We saw it with Connor, or uh, with... Um, with uh, Dan Hardy 
and um, the natural born killer, uh, <laughs> the natural born killer, uh, Carlos Condit. So like we've we've seen it before where two people throw a punch almost at the same time, but because of distance and because of their length, one connects first. And usually when it's a hard power shot like that, you're you're leaving your chin completely unprotected, and the first one that lands usually either gets rocked. The first one who lands usually rocks the other person or will knock them out. And uh, we've seen that a couple times. It makes for some good fighting, like some good stuff to watch. But you know, at the, on that same, in that same area, you have to watch making those sorts of mistakes. But that's not what this is about, okay? Whatever, it's the past is the past. You learn from that stuff. Amanda has done well, and so is Cyborg. She just had a five-round fight on the weekend, or a three-round fight, sorry. She won by unanimous decision. It was a good fight, but she totally dominated the girl, and rightfully so. She's definitely the best fighter outside of Amanda Nunes, so the, so the fight, the rematch is on the horizon. Now, Cyborg calling out Dana is kind of odd to me, because it's just like, it's your boss. Like, I don't think you're really ever supposed to like your boss. It's just one of those things in life that it's just the norm isn't to be like, oh, I love my boss so much. Not like, not really. You know, like your boss, you can have a cool boss that does things, but your boss's job is to be the boss. And that means saying things that you don't necessarily want to hear. Sometimes it's things that you need to hear and it's things that you need to do. And I think that Dana was just maybe saying that I don't know if it was his own personal opinion he he does sometimes say too much and people kind of they they thrash him a bit for it saying he's salty or they you know they say that he has no idea what he's talking about he's been a matchmaker since the 90s for fighting and he's been invested in this company for a long time and he's probably knows this sport a lot better than most people give him credit for because he he has literally been at every card, every pay-per-view, he watches every fight, everything that goes on. He's looking and scouting constantly. So, I mean, if he sees something, he probably knows what he's talking about a little bit and people need to give him more credit because he's the boss and I think that Cyborg needs to chill a little bit and if she's not ducking her, just fight her. That's how you prove someone wrong is if you if you have a problem or you have an issue with something you are in the best business to literally take care of that in the best way possible you just go fight them it's very simple it's very simple moving forward uh masvidal had some choice words we'll say he had some choice words for conor mcgregor so conor so first of all masvidal after the five second knockout of Askren, which was the luckiest knockout you will ever see it was absolute just like i don't like to call it luck it wasn't luck it was <laughs> it was like the stars aligned you know it's not luck but it's it's borderline there you know he definitely thought about it he definitely threw it and it definitely worked and you can't take that away from masvidal at all but he's but masvidal was really talking like he beat Askren and to me, that's not beating a guy. That's that's landing one shot. That's landing a miracle. You know, that's that's a miracle that happened. There's not much else to. There, there's not nothing else to really compare it to. It, there was no beating of the other fighter at all, except for the beating. <laughs> you know, uh, it's weird. It's weird to kind of put into perspective. But it's not that he beat him in a fight because beating somebody is taking them three rounds. And going a unanimous decision and the fight wasn't even close. That's winning. That's beating someone. And obviously there is those parts in the middle, you know, where you sub somebody. Like if you submit somebody, there's no luck involved. You submitted them. You beat them in every way possible. Sometimes that even happens with, with striking. But with striking, sometimes odd things can happen. You know, you get you get slippery because of sweat. You slip because of your foot or, you know, the mats, whatever. And there's all, there's just so many more variables when it comes to striking. And a lot of the times they don't involve luck at all. But there is that difference between it being a complete, spectacular, miraculous miracle that has happened and somebody viciously beating you to the point where you literally never stood a chance. That's the difference between fighting. And the fact that Masvidal is talking down to Askren, and if you know anything about Ben Askren at all, 
and you haven't and you've only ever watched him and you think that he's stupid and shitty and you don't like him you need to go and watch more on the guy because first of all he's hilarious second of all he's a fantastic fighter third of all he's probably the one of the best grapplers in the world if not the world and chances are if Masvidal did not land that knee Askren would have he would have destroyed Masvidal 10 out of 10 times. I would say every single time that that knee doesn't land, Askren wins the fight. And the guy is very humble. I don't know if anybody saw anything about it after, but Askren was saying, I totally deserve that. I deserved everything that happened. That's the way that it goes. This is fighting. I don't feel bad about it. He's like, that's hilarious to me. People are, you know, bashing him and talking about that. But Askren is completely humble about the situation, and that's fighting. He understands that that's fighting. It doesn't matter. He didn't plan on going in and out of the whole industry undefeated or unscathed or anything like that. He understands that this is the sport, and when you, when you build up a fight and you talk about somebody like that and those things happen sometimes the stars align and sometimes crazy shit happens because that's life in a nutshell what happened right there is life in a nutshell sometimes you just have to take that one chance and that's all you need is that tiny little window of opportunity and you snatch that shit and that's exactly what happened because Masvidal is not the caliber he's not a title fight caliber he's not a title contender caliber fighter there we go we got that all out there. He's not. And if you go and look at his record, you go and look at what he's done and how what's happened to him. Like you look at Darren Till. We thought that Darren Till was real good. He's not. He wasn't as good as anybody thought he was. And now he's been knocked out once and submitted once by Tyron Woodley, who in my opinion is another guy who probably shouldn't have been considered top tier. But at the same time, he's one of those fighters who's been able to do spectacular things in the welterweight division he was trying to call himself one of the greatest of all time and i'm gonna get off topic here for a second which i've already done like 11 times but he's he considered himself one of the greatest welterweights and i don't i i don't think so but you can argue it based on how many title defenses and who he beat to get to the title and how it was so he has an argument to make but at the same time i just never thought that tyron woodley was a guy who was up there because he just had a lot of holes in his game and he had you know some weird upsets so yeah I think that I didn't even talk about why Masvidal <laughs> what Masvidal said about Connor and I was like just going off about Masvidal and Askren I was amped about that stuff I wanted to talk about it but I just didn't I I I, I thought that I could save it or that it would just pass me by but whatever we just talked about it now that's what happens anyways Masvidal said that he wanted to fight Conor McGregor. He wanted a money fight. Dana White said that Conor was too small and he didn't want to match Masvidal versus Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor came out and said, I'll fight Masvidal any day of the week. Just give me, you know, a time and a place and I'll fight him. But Conor says that about everybody and it usually doesn't happen. Recently, anyways. Like, what does the guy have? Like, two fights in four years now or something? So, like, I don't know... I don't know what's going on. I just kind of want to see Conor come back and have and, and be an exciting fighter. I don't want to see him in the title picture. I just want to see him go and put on exciting fights where he can win and showcase how good his striking is because I don't want to see him versus another grappler again. It's it's it just it was proven that Conor just isn't on that on that level of a full mixed martial artist. The guy's the most spectacular striker or puncher that you could see in the octagon ever. He's there's nobody has better hands than that guy. Nobody, but in terms of a full circle MMA ability, he just doesn't have all the pieces that it takes. And you can even argue that about Khabib, but we're not going to talk about that right now because I think I've talked about it before, but it's for another day. So anyways, Masvidal gave praise to Conor for that essentially and said, hey, like if you want to fight me still, we can do that, but I respect you wanting, to, like not deliberately turning down the fight and saying like hey i don't care how big the guy is fight me because the truth is that masvidal originally was when he was fighting in bum fights in kimbo's league i don't know if anybody forgot about that you can go watch those on youtube as well masvidal used to fight in kimbo slice's backyard bum fighting league um <clears throat> masvidal is a big guy he he's even fought as heavy as light heavyweight before which is like 205 pounds or i think it might have maxed out at 185 i'm not exactly sure but the guy's a big big welterweight and he was even at lightweight at one point too so he will never be able to cut the lightweight again and i'm sure his days of being able to cut the welterweight based on how he is are probably coming 
to an end soon as well. Lastly, lastly, we have, why do, why do I do stuff? My brain. Anyways, lastly, we have Colby Covington versus Robbie Lawler happening this weekend. We got the full card. I have my predictions out. But I wanted to talk a little bit before I said that stuff just about Colby Covington to, you know, as a person. I don't like Colby Covington at all. I've said this before in other videos. Like, the dude is, like, literally, he's literally a bitch. Like, I don't. Like, I don't like to say that about people. Like, I would never... Like, if, if somebody was beefing with me, like, I wouldn't even call them a bitch. Unless they were being a bitch. But it's just one of those things, like, I literally mean the dude is, like, a pussy bitch. Like, he's... Like, the dude's a fighter, and he talks so much trash. And he's not good about trash talking at all. He's not witty. He's not smart. He's just... A shitty trash talker and you want to see him get his head pounded in it and then whenever anybody comes along and says something or gets in his face he backs up and backs off like a bitch because he's a bitch like there's no other way to put it Verdum okay so Colby Covington was in Brazil after he beat I ah, forget who he beat. He beat somebody in Brazil and he was like, I want to get the hell out of Brazil and away from these filthy animals. I hate Brazil. Screw you people. You're all filthy animals. I'm Colby Covington, essentially, and then ran out of the octagon. Like He said that in Brazil. First of all, you got a big balls for saying that in Brazil, but then you acted like a bitch because when a Brazilian guy who's also a fighter, Fabrício Verdum, came up to you and was like, hey, you better apologize for that shit. Colby Covington started yapping because he had a bunch of security guards near him and Verdum hucked a boomerang at him. A boomerang, okay? Not like a punch. He didn't huck a punch at him. He didn't huck a rock. He threw a boomerang. The boomerang was still in the bag. Like it was just, like Verdum had just bought this brand new boomerang and he's like, I can't wait to take this home and see if the boomerang boomerangs and comes back to me. Because that's what boomerangs are supposed to do. But they never do. Right? So he goes and get, he's got this boomerang. And it's still in the fucking bag. And like Colby Covington talking shit. And Veridum's like, what? Like, you can watch the video. He's got, he's got it in the bag. So I don't know how many times i got to say it's still in the bag. But he hucked the boomerang at him. Like, still in the bag. And Col Colby Covington charged him for assault. Like, dude, you're a... You're a bitch. Like I can, I've been jumped before by three people at the same time. Two people at the Delta Bitco down the street from my house. I got. I didn't charge anybody because that's life. Sometimes, like shit happens, and like those people had nothing to do with it <laughs> at all. But like you're a fucking fighter. <laughs> like you're a fighter, and you call the cops to charge another fighter for assault after you said his people are filthy. Like <laughs> the guy's a fucking. He's ridiculous. He's absolutely ridiculous. Anytime anybody comes after him, there's the one time that Usman confronted him at the casino and he got behind, he literally got behind Dana White and security. And Dana White's like, what the hell are you doing? Get away from me. I'm about to fire you. Like I'm trying to gamble and you're catching me gamble on TV. Like you're not allowed to do that stuff. I went rambling on about it still in the bag for like two whole minutes. Anyways. The dude's a bitch. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to say it. Like, the dude is just a... He just yaps, 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 and then when people get in his face, he, he, he fucks off, and he's a bitch. But he's a pretty decent fighter, actually. Not in the striking terms, because he lost to... He lost to Damian Maya. Well, he didn't lose to Damian Maya. That was stupid of me to say. He fought Damian Maya, and... I'm sure the game plan for the Damian Maya fight was to get a little sweaty first, so... Because Damian Maya's like one of the best jiu-jitsu artists in the world like he can sub anybody he wants like at any time he's won the world championship like five times or something so if Damian Maya wants to grab a hold of your leg and snap it off and beat you with it he could but it's harder when you're sweaty and I'm sure the game plan for Co when Kobe went into that fight was to let Damian and Kobe get a little sweaty and then he wouldn't be able to wrestle him as good or uh, grapple as good and then the wrestling would work that's usually the way that a typical Americanized wrestler... Like, American wrestling beats Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu most of the time. Like, I would say about 80% of the time, which is probably not a fair assessment, but 
is probably what I've noticed personally. I would say that most of the time, if you have an American wrestler, back, American wrestling background, and you're facing against a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu artist, most of the time you will win just because American wrestling is sort of more gravitated to surviving on the ground in those in, in, in those areas, whereas Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is meant to attack off the back against people who aren't as well versed. Like like wrestling is an attack method. Like wrestling, like when you're training wrestling, wrestling versus wrestling, it's an attack method. Everything you're doing is based on an attack. And Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was designed to be a defensive technique. So when you see Brazilian Jiu Jitsu artists go like wrestling themselves and doing Jiu Jitsu matches or rolling. They're using defensive attack tactics against each other to then implement attacks and submissions to submit people. But wrestling is just all attack. There's no defense in wrestling whatsoever. It's all based on attack. So that's the difference why um, that that wrestling tends to beat jiu-jitsu is because it's meant to be one way and, re and Brazilian jiu-jitsu is meant to be against people who aren't necessarily prepared for that. Anyways, Colby, he's a good wrestler, but he was getting outstruck by Damian Maya, and I would put Damian Maya's striking level at probably, like, I feel like amateur MMA fighters could probably beat Damian Maya standing up. Like, that's how poor his stand-up is, and that says a lot. But a lot of people thought that Lawler was going, I'll get into that when I get to the Lawler thing. How about that? I'll do my predictions right now. We'll get into that right now, because this video has been 23 minutes long, and I doubt anybody wants to watch me for that long i just hope that they listen to me talk about the in the bag stuff because that was funny that stuff's hilarious anyways um so we have um i i think it's a free card this weekend i think lawler versus colby is a free card on fox our espn2 i can't really remember at the moment but we're starting at the bottom so the main card so three fights the first fight's uh joaquin silva versus nazrat Hack Perast, Hack Perist. I don't know. He's a new guy that they just brought in. I think he was on looking for a fight, and he did quite well. He's one of those guys that they just brought in. Um, Nasrat is actually, when I looked at his stats and his size, he's a pretty big guy. Like he's like five ten with some decent reach, and uh, he's got like like ten fights, I believe. He has ten fights, and eight of his fights have been by knockout. So the dude is definitely a good striker, but I don't know about how he is on on the ground like grappling but we know that Joaquin Silva is good everywhere he's a good striker he's a good wrestler he's good he's got good game off his back so I do have Joaquin uh winning that fight I do have him winning that fight by unanimous